Hey guys, what is up? Uh, this is our final installment of How to Play the Soul Paint EP. And uh, this one is a fun one, it's a hard one, but it's probably my favorite on the EP in terms of guitar work and whatnot. It's If We Break. So, if you've not checked out the music video that we just dropped for this not too long ago, please do. But anyways, let's get started. For tone, I felt like using Beefcakes, uh, good old reliable. You could do with either a, like a kind of more single coil sound or a Les Paul or humbucker sound on this song because that like intro riff is definitely like a telly sound, but the verses definitely benefit from a more humbucker sound for the palm mutes. I find though just overall a, a humbucker equipped guitar might get you a little closer to just the overall song. So yeah, beef cakes. You hear that? Sounds like slapping a good piece of meat, you know? So, you know, tune to half step down in this case, actually. Um, we've got two songs on the EP that are half step down. It's the first and the last one, City Sky, and this one, Everything in Between Standard. We basically just kind of like, everything was written in, in like either or. We, we contemplated having everything in half step down. But specifically, like for those middle three songs, we felt that the standard tuning had a bit more of a lift to it. And the range was like more suitable for my delivery, I guess, like vocally. So like I could kind of get up there and like really belt it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this one's in half step down. Ernie Ball strings, as per usual, 11 and 54s. Intro, obviously you're going to use like a slightly cleaner tone. Um, and then you kick on some gain for that big chorus. So um, intro riff. Now this is going to be probably the hardest riff that I've shown people on like our page or YouTube, whatever, because it's one again, once again, it's one of like my style of playing riffs, which is just really weird and doesn't really make sense. I, I play by my ear a lot of the time. Like I don't really care about what I'm playing and sometimes I'll write stuff that's like, doesn't really make sense. And it's kind of hard for, even for me to understand at first. Like I've played this riff actually for about four years now, cause that's when I wrote it. And it literally just takes a, a, an incredible amount of practice to get it this fluent. And then to sing on top of it, it's just another thing. So we're in A. So what I'm doing is I leave that A string open the whole time, like the, the kind of more open resonant chords. Um, but I do like a little slide here from the and G, which is four two. So I'm and I'm sliding up to six four. If you just watch really closely, it's. Slide one, two, three, slide one, two, three. And then I go down to the F sharp chord that we're used to seeing, the two, mute, two, one on the G string. Actually, these guys are open actually. So. So that slide there is, is really important to make that smooth where you're going from this chord, the And then that that quick transition back to the, the four the A with the four two. Back down to the F sharp and this time we go. I think I strum both notes, so F sharp with the one, two with that extra little. So you got, kind of got to cram all your fingers in, in the second fret there. And then this time, rather than sliding up to the six, four, we just, we pop right up there. So that's E, F sharp. So I'll play it really slow once once through because this was it's just one you really have to like feel it out and learn the rhythm of. The chords aren't complicated, but it's the way that you're sliding in and how the rhythm kind of like varies each time around. So So as you notice, like it's definitely a little harder than it seems. It doesn't look super hard when you play it just like this. Cause I played this for so long, but it's actually quite hard to play. To 
to play it that clean, you really need to work on those slides and the like jumping between those chords in like a six, almost a sixteenth note uh, transition. So really, just practice that and the stops. And <laughs> I mean, good luck is all I'm gonna say. Um, and then like having to learn to play that and sing at the same time was quite a challenge. But after you've ingrained something in your memory so well, like this riff, like you'll get it. So you know. Kicking some game. It's the same for the rhythm for the that full like instrumental chorus, but we add an octave part here, which I think is really cool. It kind of like those two parts just kind of like meld together perfectly, and I just I'm really happy about how they like interact with each other. So it's just. <laughs> My bad, it's a little hard to play. So the main, like the main repeated part of that is the slide from the seven octave. So seven, mute, nine, starting on the A string. And you're sliding up to the, the 11th fret with that, with that shape. And that last time, fourth time around you go, it's just seven nine and then once again kind of like how the rhythm just pops doesn't do the it just pops right to that the six four chord it's the same here you just pop right up to the 11 13 octave rather than doing the slide and then this little kind of lick here so you kind of like do all that in a slide except for that last hit. So, and if it was in the full chorus with the repeat, it just goes. So very like talkative of a riff. It sounds like somebody's speaking that or singing that, right? And yeah, so those two riffs go at the same time. They're like super intertwined and that's like, that's like pretty much both choruses, like the instrumental chorus in the intro, and then you've got two more choruses after that throughout the song. When we get into the verse, this is probably one of my favorite riffs I've ever written. It's just like some simple palm mutes, but the way that it interacts with the vocals and just creates this really like tense, emotional situation almost. Like the chords just like support that and they're really just like creeping on you, you know? Like, so it's all in the A there. So it's going between the A and the E, so you're doing, on the D string, you're going six, nine, and bouncing back and forth. You go to the E string and then do seven, nine on the A string. So that's. And then the next time you go. So it's four on the A string. And it's four seven four six. So and you'll find the hard part is going from that in in like in literally like a sixteenth note or whatever that is. Right. And as you might notice, I kind of like crescendo the whole thing throughout the verse, which is another reason why I love it. Cause I'm starting like really like just intimate, like soft on the palm muting. And then just kind of builds right before the chorus and I kick in with like, you know, I kick in with full power. Oh, I forgot to talk about the lead guitar in the, in the verse. So it's pretty. It's a pretty simple one of those uh, like typical pop punk lead guitars with the B string and the open E. The, so from the five, the unison to seven, and then up to the nine for like kind of like the, where it rests for most of, most of that riff. Twelve, back to nine, 
and then we do this walk down seven, five, two, five. And we pick those together rather than doing like the alternate picking. Uh, that basically goes through the whole verse. Um, and then we go, so let's take it over to the second verse. Now this is where I also love the verse riff because it actually changes just a little bit in both the first half and the second half of the second verse. So we start off in the same spot like the, but we skip the E, so it's just. I'm spacing your old backyard where you can just pay me along with my heart. And we pop in for that, the four, seven there. And then what's really cool is we do like a little more almost like bluesy kind of. So I'm going six, nine, like the same thing we've been doing, but we're doing like full shots here. And then for the E, the same thing, seven, nine, 11. And the four again. So. And then at the end, we do a cool little kind of like punk rock thing. So, hit that open E. So it's, so and then that weird chord is too, this is something that the producer came up with that, like that weird chord. Um, second fret on the A, almost like a Nirvana. Kind of like that Nirvana song, but yeah, so second on the A, first on the D, and then fourth on the on the G string and then open. See, this is what I'm saying. Like he came up with this because I would never write a chord like this because of my wrist, as you can see. But it's on the record, so <laughs> and then back around to and uh, yeah, so we're in the chorus again. Now, the only thing that the different that happens is right out of the chorus, we go to a bridge. And that riff that I just showed you, like the kind of like the punk rock bluesy thing, comes back essentially. So, so we're same place, you know, the F sharp power chords. And then we just go up to four, so it's like an A flat kind of thing. Four seven four. So. This is the A chords. Essentially, you can just go. But I like to do it like this because you can get a little more control over those like shifting dynamics. So it's fifth fret, skip, six, four, open on the top two. So I kind of do like the low ones first. And bring in those high guys and you go to the E after this. So back to that weird country chord. And then we slide that up. To a three, two, four, open, open. Like a kind of weird diminished chord almost. So. And then back around again. And this one I add like a little like fifth fret on the B there for some reason. So then it just kicks down to that E chord. Something like that. The weird two, one, four, and then back to a soft version. And it just loops around until it kind of like trickles off and fades and falls apart, which is kind of like ironic. The whole, the, the song itself just kind of falls apart at the end, kind of like if we break, you know, stuff falling apart. Um, and then it goes into like an ambient outro, which is just like, you know, samples and like sections taken 
from the earlier song and like slowed down. I did a whole bunch of the production on that too, like the outro. Um, Sam did a whole bunch of production and it just kind of turns into this big ethereal, like trippy ending to our EP, which I'm really happy about. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the whole song. There, There is a lead part, once again, a lead part in the bridge. Um... <laughs> Um, you can kind of pick that up by ear once again. It's not like the most important guitar part. Um, it's just like a similar to Wolf Boy kind of pentatonic groove. You can figure that one out. I, I don't even know how to describe that. It's one of those things like I just play in the studio because it sounded cool and I don't really know how to play it that well and I can't really remember it. <laughs> I just kind of like have to pick it out by ear sometimes. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching How to Play If We Break. Um, I mean, that's it for our EP. We're big news. We're going to put out an acoustic version of this EP for you guys. And um, we hope you guys in have enjoyed these How to Play videos. And uh, thank you, and stay tuned for the acoustic version. Peace!